Hello there, Year 8. My name is Mr. Smith, and I'm going to talk you through what to expect if you take GCSE Design and Technology at Hodgson. So, what is Design and Technology? Design and Technology is all about converting ideas and raw materials into the products and services that we all need and use every day of our lives. Everything is designed from the car you want to drive, the phone in your pocket, the app on your screen, the advertising and the packaging for the food you eat the building you're in and the furniture you sit on. All of these things started off as an idea inside the head of a designer. They all required that light bulb moment of innovation and the time and dedication to develop the idea into its final form. And that is what this course is all about. Preparing you for a journey into a creative future where you can really make a difference to the world. This course will help develop your skills and knowledge to design and make things that solve problems using a wide range of techniques, tools and state-of-the-art equipment to do so. So why is design and technology so important? Well, it's well documented that there's a national shortage of professionals in the many different fields of design. Looking at the list of shortage occupations, it's clear to see that designers, engineers and architects make up a significant number. What that means is that there's a gap in the job market for young people like you in the future. The course is split into two parts. 50% of your final grade will come from an exam. The other 50% will come from your NEA, or non-exam assessment, which is a coursework-based project you will complete in your 11. Throughout the three years, you'll work on a series of different projects. These projects include designing and making a wooden passive speaker using traditional workshop tools and equipment. There is an architectural project where you'll learn technical drawing skills to design your dream house drawing it up on a computer as well as making a scaled down model. You'll learn about mechanisms and systems including how to program a micro bit. You'll design a product that will aid people with disabilities which you'll draw up on a computer and 3D print. All of these projects cover the wide range of skills that you will need to complete your NEA independently and with confidence. The theory content is interlaced with the projects to make it relevant and gives you an idea of the bigger picture in the world of design. The exam is split into three sections and it's worth 100 marks in total. For the NEA you will be given a choice of challenges by the exam board. You will identify and research a problem related to one of these challenges and develop a product of your choosing. You will generate a range of ideas, develop it further through modelling and sketching and then make it using a range of CAD, machinery and traditional workshop skills before evaluating your final product. You will record all of this work in a portfolio which is also worth 100 marks. So what key characteristics will you need? Firstly you need to be open to learning new skills. From sketching, technical drawing, computer design and different making skills you'll cover a lot so having a positive attitude is a must. You'll be trusted to use machinery and equipment that is both expensive and can be dangerous if you are not fully in control. Having a degree of maturity is imperative, I've got to trust you to use it. Creativity is outstandingly important. You'll get more marks in your NEA if you can come up with ideas that are unique and innovative. And you'll lose marks if you fixate on design that already exists. You need to be dedicated to your work. A lot of it requires time, care and attention to make it the best it can be. If it's rushed, it looks rushed and there's no way around that. Resilience is key for any designer. James Dyson failed 5,127 times when developing the first Dyson vacuum. Each time he learned from his mistakes and gradually improved. You will experience failure a lot. It's all about how you respond to that that makes you an effective design practitioner. Finally, you need to be able to work independently. Your NEA requires you to develop your own idea. I'm not allowed to tell you what to do. You have got to guide your project yourself and ensure you complete it by the deadline. So where can design and technology lead you? There are many different paths you can take once you've left Hodgson, including A-levels, B-techs and apprenticeships, to name a few. You could go down the academic route and study engineering, product design or graphics. Or, you could go down the vocational route and do an apprenticeship for BTEC or MVQ in many different areas. 
You could then go on to have a successful career in many different fields of design. You could go into product or graphic design, work in fashion, design furniture or become an architect. You could become an interior designer or a CAD technician, work in automotive design or any field of engineering from designing electrical products, roads or even planes and ships. The different pathways are endless. If all of that sounds intriguing to you, then design and technology is something you should consider. It doesn't matter about your ability. I'll work with you to build up your confidence and skills over the next three years. There is the old myth that design and technology is a subject just for boys. And I really want to dispel that myth right now. The number of girls going into design and engineering is ever increasing and is something we at Hodgson are trying to emulate. If you have any questions or queries, please don't hesitate to email me at any time. Thank you.